So in this video, we're going to introduce the project that we'll be doing in the electrical engineering unit. Things that you should take note of um, and be able to do after this video. First, you should be able to explain the role of a microcontroller in a display circuit. So what does the microcontroller do in our circuit? Second, you should be able to explain the difference between an analog or a digital circuit or an analog and digital signals. Third, you should be able to use Ohm's law to calculate the resistor value that's necessary to supply a 10 milliamp current in a 5 volt LED circuit. For this circuit, we'll assume that there's a voltage drop across the LED of 2.3 volts. Finally, well, the last two things you should be able to explain the importance of interdisciplinary project teams and the importance of co-discipline specialist teams since you will have both of those types of teams in this project. Here are the specifications for the project. You are going to be designing a display that uses persistence of vision concept in order to be able to write a message or draw a picture. We're going to use eight red, green, blue LEDs. These are LEDs that have the three colors of red, green, blue inside them and, and look like one e LED. And when we rotate our project or the system, the lights should flash, su flash such that they display a, an image that can be read or viewed. You're going to mount your entire project onto a board in order to be able to rotate the display. Your kit for uh, this board and for this project with all the materials that you'll need will be given to you. We're going to use an Arduino to control the lights, that's our microcontroller, and this is the showing the breadboard with all of the eight LEDs and um, the wiring to and from the Arduino board. Before we get into the specifics of the project, we need to understand this, the basic idea of what's happening with this color wheel. Basically, we can think of the Arduino as a switch. So if you look at the Arduino right here, I have represented that as a switch. All it does for us is open and close the circuit so that when the Arduino is allowing and um, allowing current to flow and it's uh, connected. We have current flowing through the system. That means that our switch is closed and we can turn an LED on. If we open the switch, then we turn our LED off. So that's all we're doing basically is using the Arduino and the logic and the programming to open and close switches um, on a circuit in order to turn our LED light on. Notice over here I have a power supply which is supplying 5 volts of um, voltage and also a resistor here which makes sure that I don't have too much current flowing through my LED to either ruin the LED or the Arduino. What is a, an Arduino? Let's take a look at this a little more in depth. Basically, it's just a small computer, also called a microcontroller, that's located right here on this um, diagram. That chip is the microcontroller. And the rest of the things on the board are um, basically the way that we uh, talk to and from the microcontroller. So um, we have USB connection that helps the, or lets the Arduino communicate to the computer so that lets us put programs onto the microcontroller. It also powers the microcontroller. We also have a power supply of 9 volts that we can use from either a 9 volt battery. We can also get power that's 5 volts from our USB. And then the rest of these little ports right here, or pins, are the connectors that you are going to use for your project. These are the input and output connectors that we'll use. Let's talk about what a digital signal is. Digital signals are either on or off, high or low, um, and they 
can only recognize either a high or low state. Somewhere in between, we don't know what that is. Um, a, a digital input-output, that's what this I.O. stands for, is input-output. We can either program it to be an input or an output, and we're going to use those to turn on lights. When we've programmed it to be an output, that means that we can have current flow through and we'll, we can either set the voltage for that pin either high or low and it can supply up to 40 milliamps of current. When we program it as an input, however, it means that we've got a really high resistance within the microcontroller for that pin and there's no current flowing in or out um, of that pin. We're going to use that um, we're going to use th that concept in order to make sure that no current flows backwards through the LED, um, destroying the LED. And uh, the Arduino has 14 digital I.O. or input-output pins, numbering from 0 all the way to 13. Right. Next we'll talk about analog signals. An analog signal is a signal that can take on any value between 0 and 5 volts, um, rather than only a single 5 volt or 0 volts. It can have any value, so it kind of looks like this smooth curve, anywhere between 0 and 5 volts. We have six analog inputs for the Arduino. They're labeled A0 through A5. and um, basically it's turned into an analog uh, signal uh, via an analog to digital converter. So any numbers or values 0 through 1023 represents our full range of, of inputs of voltage from 0 volts being a 0 value all the way up to 5 volts which is the maximum 1023. There's a 10 kilo ohm resistor inside the chip and we're going to use that uh, and connect it to one of the analog pins um, to, the, uh, to 5 volts using our software. We're going to use this feature when we um, use the sensor to tell us when to draw the picture. It's going to help us keep that value of that pin at a certain voltage until we see a magnetic field or the sensor sees a magnetic field and then it will change. So we can um, have a nice sharp reaction to our, our sensor. Um, the analog pins are used as outputs. They can act like digital I.O. pins. They're either high or low value. But we're going to use it as an, as an input for our project. With this project, we're going to use something called pulse width modulation. Basically what it is, is we're just changing the time that a light is on. And if we turn it on and off quickly enough, we can kind of change it so that it looks like it's just partially on, or sort of, sort of dim. Um, we can do this to, to mix colors um, when we are using the red, green, and blue. For certain pins on the Arduino, we can adjust the percentage time that it's on or the time the percentage of the the pulse width um, we do this by using the analog write command shown here we have to tell it what pin to analog write to and what value you can see which pins that this will work on on your arduino by looking at um, the ones that have the little tilde or little squiggly by them those are ones that are are usable with pulse width modulation. So for example, you can see the diagram below for values between 0 and 255. So 0 is all off and 255 is all on. If we give it a value of 63, then it's 25% on and we have a pulse width that's 25% um, of our um, width of our, or of our uh, frequency of our Arduino. If we give it a value of 127, then it's 50% on, and then 255, it's all on the whole time. To drive our LEDs, LEDs like to run at currents between 5 and 20 milliamps, and generally have a, a approximate 
um, voltage drop of 2.3 volts. So we can figure out what resistor we have to put into the circuit in order to have this be the case. We can use the, the digital outputs to drive LEDs, but we have to include that resistor, otherwise we're going to burn out the LED. There's too, there would be too much um, current going through without the resistor. There are three separate LEDs in our RGB LED, one for red, green, and blue and they share a common negative terminal or a common cathode that will go to the ground. So we have to put a resistor on each one of the red, green, and blue leads. And we can do a simple Ohm's law calculation to figure out what resistor value we need. So if we assume um, we're going to plug in 2.7 volts, which is the voltage drop that's left over after we take out the, the 2.3 for the the LED will take 5 milliamps, um, get it into amps, and that's uh, multiplied by the resistance value that we want to find. So rearranging that, we get uh, our resistance value that we want is equal to 2.7 volts, the drop across the resistor, divided by the current flowing through the circuit, which is 0 0.005 amps, or 5 milliamps. Um, we can uh, see that we do this calculation and we get 540 ohms. So that's the resistor that um, will be safe for us to use. Uh, we can play around with the resistance values in um, RGB if we want to, to do a white balance. Some uh, of the LEDs have more lumens, like the, the green one you'll notice, or the blue one are, are more bright than the red one. So you can play around with those resistor values as long as you make sure you're not putting more than 20 milliamps through that um, LED. So we don't have enough pins on our Arduino to drive all of the LEDs separately, so we're going to have to take turns. We're going to have to let, have them share, which means that we're going to have to multiplex. Um, this is just means that we're um, quickly switching between lights to make the display. Um, but to our eyes, we won't be able to tell the difference. So we're going to use separate pins for each color, each red, green, and blue. But we'll connect the red, green, and blue um, leads for our, our, for our LEDs together. And then each row will have its own separate uh, pin. So the common cathode for the first LED will hook to row 0, and then uh, row 1, etc. as we go down the LEDs. And that lets us drive um, 24 LEDs, seeing since the RGB LEDs are really three LEDs in one, we'll have 24 LEDs that we can drive with really only just 11 pins. So to turn on row zero red, if we wanted to turn the, that first LED red, we would set the pin for that's connected to red high and set the pin that's connected to row zero low, and that would turn on the LED in the zeroth position red. And we could do the same thing for green and blue. We would just turn on the green or the blue, respectively. Or we could turn them all on and use our pulse width modulation to get mixed colors. So let's see how that would work. In order to see how we can do this, we write a timing diagram. We can do it two ways. The first is by color and the second is by row. First I'll show what the color looks like if we write a timing diagram for the color. This helps us see how the signals on the red, green, and blue LEDs relate to the row signals. So what you're seeing here is we show a signal um, that gives us the start or the, the tells the Arduino to start the drawing and start the cycles through all of our LEDs. And then we see we go red, green, and blue, red, green, and blue, and that just continues on um, in that infinite loop. To see what uh, rows are turned on, we look down here to the rows um, diagram. And by matching up this row with what's going on with the um, red, green, and blue, we can tell what color the LEDs are going to be. So for example, in this first set of for row 0, we can see that row 0 is on here when the red is on, and then it's on here 
when the blue is on. And then finally on here when the red is on. So that would result in a flashing of red, blue, red. And going on, if we have row one on when red and blue are on, and then nothing in column two, and then row one is on when green is on, then we would have it flash purple or magenta, black or off, and green. And finally, for the final row, if everything's on, that gives us white. If we have green and blue on together, that gives us yellow. And then the last would be um, only on when red is on, giving us red. We can also look at the timing diagram by row. Um, and this just shows us cycling through rows 0 through 7, and then when we would have the signals for the different colors on. Similarly, row 1, if you look and trace through, we'll have it red, blue, red, just as before, um, purple, black, green, and white, yellow, and red. Look through, take a minute and look through and make sure that you understand that this diagram is showing the same thing as we were showing in the previous diagram, just in a different format. So there are going to be several tasks to complete this project. First of all, let's talk about the programming tasks. The Arduino microcontroller uses a C or a version of C for its programs. And you can um, use C. It's just another programming language. You've already had some experience with Scratch. And so you're just going to um, take your understanding of how programming works and use it in C. However, the difference is that now instead of dragging and dropping blocks of program, you are going to be writing text to declare variables and write functions. In Arduino, it already, each program has two main functions that you'll use. It has a setup function that runs one time when you turn the power on to the Arduino, and then it has a loop function that's going to keep running forever while the Arduino is powered. It's just like that forever loop that we saw in Scratch. Um, and then we're going to add our own functions to turn lights on and off and to be able to get the picture um, that we draw and tell Arduino what that picture is. The hardware tasks, we need something to a board to put everything on um, that will be cut out on a laser scriber or however your uh, teacher has determined that you're going to cut out your board. You'll need to have all of the wires connected. You can see all the wiring between the Arduino and the, um, the breadboard, as well as to the Hall effect sensor and to um, the battery. And then we need something, some kind of handle in order to be able to spin everything. We're going to use a magnet that will be embedded in the handle and a magnetic sensor called a Hall effect sensor. That'll tell us when the magnet has come ne next to and past the sensor and that'll tell us, that'll tell the Arduino when to draw the picture. So your two teams that you're going to be involved with during this project, you'll have a project team that will be responsible for delivering a completed um, color display. Each member on your project team is going to have a different role and responsibility and you within your project team will have responsibilities to deliver your piece of the project. You're going to hold team meetings ideally every class time to talk about what your prog progress is during the project. This um, example would be, you know, if we're talking about building peanut butter and jelly sandwiches, this would be the team that's responsible for producing the sandwiches. Um, we can think about a specialist team. On a specialist team, the members of that team have the same specialty, or they have the same or similar um, job responsibilities, and they can act as resources for one another. Um, they can help each other with with challenges they may come up against during their tasks. These types of team meetings are going to be um, less frequent and they're intended to support 
the technical needs. What do you need to do to be able to do your your job? For example, if I'm, you know, have a project team that's uh, making pe peanut butter and jelly sandwiches, this would be the bread. The specialist team would be like those who specialize in the bread making. For our project, let's talk about those teams that you're going to have. You're going to have uh, three basic areas that you need to divide up tasks. Hardware, software, and documentation. And these are the responsibilities that um, each person will have to take on. The, you may have a fourth member of your team. Um, this person could act as product project manager. If you don't have a fourth person, then one of your three people will need to be the project manager to make sure everything's staying on time to keep the project on schedule may need to um, help and reassign tasks but basically hardware the person who will be the hardware specialist will need to cut the board mount all the components on the board cut the handle install the magnet and wire everything up with the the LEDs and the the sensor the software person will be mainly responsible for um, the setup of the soft software, programming test patterns on the software, programming the, the time multiplexing, and um, programming the Arduino to interpret the graphics file. The documentation person will be concerned with the overall design. This person will draw an overall schematic that the hardware and software specialist will need to refer to. Uh, documentation specialist will be responsible for creating the graphics or the picture that you'll draw. Also, uh, it's recommended that this documentation person be uh, the project manager. In addition, they will be responsible for the final project report.